Okei, okay. Batman and Superman Battle of the Super Sons debuted in New York Comic Con on October 8th and the rest of the world, including me, gets to see it October 18th forward. I decided that since I already made a video covering how and why one of those two titular characters exists, I might as well, while waiting for that movie, do a quick history lesson on the other character. Well, quick as in how big of a video I get to do before the movie itself actually comes out. I have kept myself mostly in the dark on what the story and the premise is for the film, so my response, reaction, review, whatever, I might do cover it will be relatively blind. So, if I go over the brief history of Jonathan Samuel Kent, aka the son of Superman, aka the modern version of Superboy, after this guy, I will be setting my blind expectations for the film and also sharing what my opinion is on the character. <laughs> Back in 2015, when DC Comics was still going through the latter half of the New 52, they decided to make an event called Convergence, which saw Brainiac pull different eras of DC characters on a random planet to fight each other to the death. Among those different versions was the post-crisis versions of Superman and Lois, who had spent a year on the planet inside a bottled city of Gotham. During that year, Superman had been powerless, and since that restraint was thrown out the window, he and Lois got busy to the point that by the time Brainiac's battle royale was starting to happen, Lois was close to the end of giving birth to their son. Long story short, Superman had to go up against the Flashpoint timeline surviving heroes, while the Flashpoint Superman, or Subject 1 as he was called, took Lois to the Flashpoint Batman to protect her, as a way to save her as he had failed to save his Lois. Superman naturally overpowered the Flashpoint heroes and made his way to the Flashpoint Batcave, where the Flashpoint Batman had treated her humanely, and allowed Superman to use his equipment to help Lois who had gone into labor due to the stress of the events. And that is how Jonathan Samuel Kent was born, originally, because by now this has all been retconned to have happened in the mainstream DC Universe timeline. Anyway, following the convergence, Superman and Lois along with their newborn son managed to slip into the New 52 world state, where they pretty much lived undercover from letting the New 52 Justice League know about them. And I have covered these events Superman is witnessing here on a previous video, link down in the description. For the following 5 to, I don't know, years probably, if I have to estimate from John's age here, he is probably a 7 year old, they lived as Clark, Lois and John Whites, likely in memory of the post-crisis Perry White, and at the end of Dan Jurgens and Lee Week 7 issue miniseries, John was then told of his true origins. The miniseries also ended right around the same time when the DC Rebirth was starting to happen, and the new 52 Superman was given his final story, where he was literally dying over everything that had happened to him during the final year of the new 52. The last thing he had to do before dying was to deal with a... Long story short, a sentient solar flare that believed it was Superman and was hostile to anyone who opposed that claim. That included the New 52 Superman himself when confronting it, and in trying to make it the only Superman around, the sentient solar flare eventually also ended up confronting the post-crisis Superman by bringing the New 52 Lois to him and John. The confrontation between those two parties then caused the New 52 Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman to discover the presence of the Cross Crisis Superman, and eventually the two Supermen defeated the sentient solar flare, with the New 52 Superman making sure it blew up. Then the New 52 Superman died somewhat peacefully when surrounded by his friends and allies, with the post crisis Superman recognizing his younger counterpart's sacrifice meaning, that the world he had moved into now needed a new Superman. And that was what led to the DC Rebirth Superman and Action Comics runs written by Peter Tomasi and Dan Jurgens, where the post-crisis Superman and his family properly took their place as the main Superman, Lois and Superboy in the DC Rebirth world state. After enough team-ups with the Justice League and of course with Batman, Superman introduced his son John to his new old allies, 
who eventually also included the then recently aged up 13 year old Damian Wade. Explaining the circumstances of Jon's and Damian's first meeting is a long story, but let's just say that it included Damian confronting Jon for mistakes he had made when not controlling his powers properly and ended up causing their fathers to intervene, which then led up to them making their sons learn how to work together and get along better. And that is the origin story of the modern Super Sons that the upcoming movie is supposedly based on. Peter Tomasi wrote that title for 17 issues in making Jon and Damien work together in a handful of fun adventures, with their contrasting personalities being the fun hook of their friendship. Not to mention the art drawn by Jorge Jimenez, which gave the series a manga-like feeling. These adventures included a confrontation against Kid Amazo, teaming up with the Teen Titans iteration that Damien was leading at the time, got their very own base, met the three new 52 Titans of Tomorrow, and entered a boarding school together. Unfortunately, while all good things must come to an end, the Super Sons title was brought to a premature end because of Superman's other flagship title, aka Action Comics, was reaching its 1000th issue, and DC decided to celebrate it by giving the characters writing duties away from Dan Jurgens and Peter Tomasi over to Brian Michael Bendis, who had just then jumped over from Marvel to DC. Not only did that mean that Superman was made to downgrade himself into going back to wearing his underwear on the outside again, but Bendis also got the brilliant idea to take Dan Jurgen's story idea of a saint from the past Jor-El, who came to take John from Superman and Lois in order to educate him on his Kryptonian heritage. The purpose of this was so then that John ended up falling into a black hole that took him to Earth 3, where Ultraman of the Crime Syndicate kept him captive in a volcano without sunlight to power him up for years, until he escaped and came back home as a late teenager completely stealing away any coming-of-age stories John could have had by aging him up from 9 to 10 year old into a 16 to 18 year old. There are speculations on why this was done, like because Brian Michael Bendis doesn't know how to write child characters and only teenagers as his early 2000s Ultimate Spider-Man run can testify. However, the conclusive reason that I have reached, because someone else said it in their own video talking about John's age skipping, is that Bendis wanted to use John as THE Superboy to be welcomed into the Legion of Superheroes in the future, instead of a young version of Superman. And because somewhere along his word salad of story scripts, Bendis got the idea to have John paired up slash fall in love with Saturn Girl. But that did not last. Or maybe it did. I wouldn't know with how Ben describes his modern comics as the final stretch of his action comics run made Frieza blowing up Namek actually feel like five minutes. But to go back to the Super Sons, they were a popular phenomenon that the fans actually liked when it was happening. And when it ended, practically no one was happy with what we got in their place instead. After Bendis' run on Superman was then over, and the character was handed over to other writers, like Tom Taylor, there was a chance to win the fans back over. All it would have taken from Tom Taylor would have been to pull an ocarina of time and revert Jon back into a 10 year old and let the character get back his stolen childhood like Link was and let us see him grow into that character we were dumped with too soon. But we all know what happened instead. And that topic deserves its own separate rant from me, something similar that Tevya and many others have been doing since Superman Son of Kal-El started its nosedive in sales, with Tom Taylor just doubling, tripling and quadrupling down, no matter what kind of criticism he has been given. Jon was not the only one who suffered from the cancellation of the Super Sons title, by the way. Losing his best friend also ended up having a negative effect on Damien, 
who around this time would have needed the positive influence that John had been giving to him. Especially around the time when Dick Grayson had been shot to the head and forgotten his life as Robin and Nightwing. Not to mention Alfred's death at Bane's hands that Damien had to witness. Both of which, by the way, happened under Tom King's run on Batman. And then there was Adam Glass's run on Teen Titans, which had Damien keep the villains they fought captive and hidden from the rest of the world, essentially undoing the work of developing Damien into a more likable character that he was when hanging out with John. And even when Peter Tomasi came back to write two 12 to 14 issues long maxi series on Super Sans, both of them were unfortunately written to be set before Bendis' Man of Steel series, where John was taken by his grandfather to be aged up. Meaning that the only comfort they had in them was that placebo kind of best described with that age old saying, You gave me happiness. And then you took it away. Anyway, that was my best quick way to explain the brief history of the rise and fall of the Super Sons before the animated movie comes out. I will be covering the Battle of the Super Sons eventually when I get the chance with either a written review similar to this format or by easier way to try to do and edit a reaction video until that happens or until I get another video posted out. Now it's your time to like this video, comment what you think about Super Sons and or how I managed to talk about them. Share the video for other people to see, and subscribe for those other videos I will also have coming in the future. Also, ding the bell for a chance to chat with me when I do gameplay streams, recap reviews, and may your heart be your guiding key.